somebody take a picture? No, I'm trying to live stream, but my phone's not connecting. <laughs> Do you want me to take a picture of you guys? Because this is just fighting. I'm just going to have to. All right, here we go. Uh, all right. Yeah. See if that it's it's hard to get all of the uh, <laughs> all the plane in, but I know. I oh oh it is live. Darn it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, you too. Hey guys, uh, sorry about that really awkward opening, but welcome to Vintage Space's first ever live stream. Um, I was taking a picture of a, a gentleman and his son in front of the SR-71, which is like the most badass plane ever. Um, I have not written about it, but I can at some point. So, the point of doing this live stream, which um, I apologize, is not actually a live stream. Um, I'm at the Udvar Hazy Museum in Virginia, and through some odd circumstances today, I've ended up here um, and some of you may know some of you've been here some of you have just heard which I'm in the I have just heard category there's a really awesome space hangar here and I'm gonna turn around you can see shuttle discovery is right there so I thought it would be fun to do a bit of a live, uh, bleh, a live stream um, of this now unfortunately I'm not actually doing it live um, because my video today about the acoustics of rocket launches went live and I didn't want to do two videos in one day and and uh, overload you guys so I'm gonna hold this until now, now that you're watching it. But um, we are still going to do a bit of a live stream feel just so that I can play around with what it's like to talk to my phone in public. Um, but I thought that I would give you guys a bit of a reveal of going into the uh, the space hangar at the Udvar Hazy Museum because there's some really amazing space stuff that you guys would love to see um, and that I would love to see and I'm super excited to see. So I am going to go ahead and flip my camera around and show you as you walk in. And apologies, I hope the sound is coming through because of the headphones. So, <laughs> and apologies, I don't have one of those Steadicam things that will actually like give you guys a non-walking, I should stop walking, my hands are not steady, but welcome. Uh, oh, this place is awesome. Oh, ah, oh, yeah, they have my favorite things here, which is why I really wanted to live stream it for you guys. Um, so, the shuttle Discovery is front and center. We're going to walk around it. Um, there is so much stuff here. Sorry, I'm, I'm kind of kind of floored. All right. I don't even know what that is. Yeah, this is, uh, just so you guys know, this is 100% a live stream because you can hear me saying that I don't know what things are. Um, uh, let's go over here. Let's start over here because this is this is what I actually came to see. So a lot of you guys who have been following me for a while now know that my favorite thing in the world is the Gemini Paraglider. And I, I came here to see, let's see if we can get a picture of me with it. <laughs> it's here. This, this, I'm gonna flip the camera around again. Uh, this is the Gemini Regalo uh, test tow vehicle. Um, so here's the wing, here's the regalo. I've never seen one of these things in person. This is so cool. Um, oh, I'm having way too much fun with this. This is the, the system that NASA developed. Here's the, the information for those of you guys who'd like to speed read. Um, this is the system that NASA tried to develop in from 1962 to 1965 to land the Gemini spacecraft um, on land like an airplane so that they could not have things splashing down because as we know splashdowns um, I should flip this around because um, <laughs> splashdowns do things like corrode metal and risk astronauts drowning and all those bad things so the, the regalo wing <laughs> the regalo wing was designed to take take that out of the equation and actually make it so that it could land safely uh, on a runway so this is why I mean I've been obsessed with this thing for ages and I know it's here the other one of these so this is this is a small vehicle that was actually raised by helicopter and then dropped sorry, was and then dropped down to, to train how it would actually land you can actually see over here, the North American Aviation Insignia. It was built by North American. Um, and it sent three North American pilots to the hospital. Um, I interviewed, I interviewed here, I should flip this back around. Um, I interviewed one of them, um, Don, I interviewed Don McCusker's widow a few years ago. And he was one of the pilots that, um, that was sent to the hospital, I think with broken ribs. I've got a blog about it and I'll put it in the description below. Um, he was sent to the hospital, I think, like four days before Christmas one year, and she was really mad because he was supposed to do the Christmas shopping that year. Um, the other name of the pilot who went to the hospital 
escapes me right now, but the third pilot who flew it was Jack Swigert, who we all know then joined NASA when he retired from North American as a test pilot and flew on Apollo 13. Um, so that's that's little tidbits about the Regalo wing. There's there's obviously like way more to say. Um, I will put put links in the description. Um, and oh, we also apparently have Gemini. Ooh. This is Gemini 7. <laughs> ah, guys, you should all be here. You should all come to this museum. Uh, Gemini 7, I'll flip this around. Um, as we know, this was two weeks, two weeks sitting in this front seat of a Volkswagen is roughly how it's been described. Um, Jim Lovell and Frank Borman just did the endurance test and uh, said it was pretty boring and also smelled like a latrine pretty quickly. Um, Okay, what else? What else can I can I show you guys? Um, this is the problem with live, is that it's very much live, and it's very much me, uh, ooh, wow, it's very much me not preparing things, but I thought it'd still be kind of fun. Oops, sorry, wrong, wrong camera, wrong camera. Okay, Freedom 7. <laughs> no way. I thought this was, I feel like I saw this, oh, Freedom 7-2. What is that? Ooh, this is, this is, this is what live looks like. Um, huh an unflown Mercury. That makes sense. So Freedom 7, of course, being Al Shepard's Mercury uh, spacecraft, is, I believe, I saw it at the, um, what's that, that museum? The Naval, Naval, uh, the Naval Academy Museum, because uh, Shepard was a Navy man. Um, so yeah, and it, it's, of course, in the plastic, that horrible plastic that preserves the capsules very nicely, but also makes it so that all you can really see is the reflection of lights. Um, so yes, this makes sense that this one, I will turn the camera around, is not protected. Um, but it's kind of nice because you can actually see all of the details on the skin and you can see, I don't know if you guys can see in there, there is some, some detail of the uh, control panel wiring and stuff through the window. It's really, really tiny. Every time I see one of these, it kind of like shocks me that it's absolutely this tiny. Okay, let's continue walking and I'll, I'll uh, I'll narrate for you guys. It's not It's not very exciting narration. Oh, wow. I don't know what that is, but I'm going to go over there next. I just want to show you guys the other half of this little exhibit um, has heat shields, which are so super cool. Oh, it's Glenn's seat. I wonder if this is, yeah, John Glenn's training couch. Here you go. That's kind of fun. That's the size John Glenn looks sitting down in a spacesuit. <laughs> um, so yeah, the other half of this. Oh, no way. Okay, see, fun. Okay. This, I wrote about this. this, this is horrible lighting. I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is the, um, the articulated motorized dummy that they use to train, um, to test spacesuits so that they wouldn't have to risk astronauts hurting joints and stuff. I wrote about this one not too, too long ago. Again, link in description. Um, when uh, one of the other ones, there's two of these were built and the other one was recently auctioned off and I don't actually know if it was sold. I'm sure it did. I'm not sure for how much. I'm sure it was a lot. But I did not, I knew that the other one was owned by the Smithsonian. I didn't know it was here. So I'll try to try to get a better picture. Um, I mentioned that it's got, it's, it's all pneumatically operated with this like aluminum skin over top of it and then rubber pants and a rubber jacket to make it look humanoid. I can't totally get the face. It's too bright with discovery behind it, but it's creepy. I'll take pictures. It's creepy. This is awesome. I did not know this is here. This is cool. Okay, so here, here is um, Gemini heat shield. Again, the plastic means that it's <laughs> exceptionally hard to actually see the details, especially in a video, but I hope this is doing a little bit of something. Um, yeah, it's it's awesome. I don't know. I, I don't really have much else to say about it. And I think I think over here, um, cameras. Just oh wow, that lit up. I wonder why the dummy didn't light up. Another Gemini heat shield, just for uh, for funsies. Yeah. Oh, and the mobile quarantine facility is here. That's also kind of fun. I let's see if I can get a shot. Ooh, inside it. Yes, I kind of can. Okay. Here, can you guys see that? <laughs> I, I, I ask the non-existent live stream. Um, that's tiny. I always find it really interesting. I mean, you know, like intellectually that these things are all really small, but then to actually see just how tiny they are is, is just like, uh, wow, all of this stuff was very much not as big and glamorous as you would think it is. Um, so that, let's see, I don't know. Ooh, here's Armstrong's visor. Why don't these things light up? I want them to light up so I can show you guys. Here's, here's Neil Armstrong's EVA visor, apparently. I just learned that because, you know, I've never, oh, sorry, that was a finger shot. Um, yeah. So there's my little, 
Oh, and I'll show you guys this too. It's got the Hornet Plus 3. Okay, this is a much better view. Sorry, I showed you the wrong the wrong angle before, but Hornet Plus 3, which is, of course, um, the Hornet, USS Hornet. Um, oh, look, recovery team. <laughs> the USS Hornet was, of course, the ship that recovered Apollo 11, and I think Apollo 12, too. Um, I'd have to double check that, to be honest, off the top of my head. But um, yeah, so Hornet Plus 3 was Hornet Plus the three astronauts. I'm pretty sure it did Apollo 12 as well. Um, and I, I can't get a good shot from here, but I'll show you anyways. It's the Parasev. I love this thing. Oh my god. This is the, uh, I don't know which one I'd, I'm gonna have to go up to the balcony up there to check, but, um, this is what Neil Armstrong and Milt Thompson started building and ended up making into a little test program at, uh, the, the high-speed flight station, which is then then Dryden, now Armstrong, uh, to test control of the Regalo wing. Uh, this was the vehicle that was towed behind a muscle car and then ultimately air-towed by a small plane so that uh, pilots could get a sense of what it was like to actually control the vehicle in flight. And there's a dummy up there, and I can't wait to get a good picture to see just how small it is. So, yeah. Okay. So that's about 10 minutes. Um... It's, it's very awkward to do a live stream when you're talking to yourself, talking to your phone in public. So I'm going to stop now. But um, I thought you guys would kind of enjoy seeing a little bit of this. Actually, there's one more thing here. Oops, sorry, son, that I'm going to show you before I shut this off. Um, the Apollo, oops, sorry, fingers. I'm not good at this, but the Apollo 11 flotation collar. So, yeah, I assume, yeah, this is a boilerplate command module. Um, I have never seen one with the flotation collar and stuff attached because you don't see that very often because you usually see them under plexiglass to preserve them. And there's the balloons up top to keep it up in the, the stable one position. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's also kind of cool. This is, this is awesome. And let's just do one more, one more shot of the test tow vehicle there because it's the greatest. All right. Oh, try and turn that around. Okay, there we go. All right. So I'll do this. Uh, let me know what you guys think of a live stream like this in the comments, um, cause I've never done this before, but I think it could be kind of fun. I admittedly don't go to super exciting places like this all the time, but when I do, it would be really fun to be able to share it with you guys. Um, and if I didn't have a video up today, I would have done it live, although the, the internet in here is not very good, so I don't know if I'd even be able to do it live, which is why I'm hoping that holding it until today, whatever day this is that I decide to post it, um, actually gives it a better quality. Um, so let me know if you guys have questions or comments about anything that I very briefly showed you. Um, I will again have links to past blogs and past videos in the description and stuff um, to give you guys a bit more information, but I'm happy to answer questions. Um, and let me know what you think about live streaming and whether I should do more of it and also maybe invest in one of those things that keeps your camera steady so that it doesn't give you guys motion sickness when I walk with the camera. Um, all right, as always, be sure to follow me on Twitter and on Instagram, AST Vintage Space, for daily content. Uh, Facebook as well, by, by name, you can find me there. And of course, new videos going up every week right here on Vintage Space, so be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. All right, thanks guys.